So the other day I caught the end of Bridget Jones's diary on TV, the first one, and honestly it's a movie I've watched so many times before. But this time I suddenly had this thought that, oh my god, if alcohol was a real life person, that person would totally be Daniel Cleaver, Bridget's boss and love interest, the one that's played by Hugh Grant. And I was thinking that because he is sexy and charming and he seems so glamorous at first. He makes Bridget feel great initially, but ultimately we see that he doesn't care about her or treat her with respect. In fact, he cheats on her, lets her down and makes a lot of empty promises, which kind of sounds like alcohol. When you think about drinking, a lot of that rings true. For most of us, alcohol was exciting and glamorous at first. It is literally beautifully packaged. And you think you've found the secret to feeling amazing and you're in this great relationship, but then you start to realize that it's pretty one-sided. An alcohol doesn't care about you and it tends to leave you feeling horrible, both physically and mentally. So I'm watching this film again and I suddenly realized that, okay, if Daniel Cleaver is like alcohol, then Mark Darcy, who's played by Colin Firth, he's a bit like sobriety, isn't he? Because Bridget does not like him at first. She thinks he's boring and dull and he wears terrible jumpers. He does not have the same glamour. But it turns out that he is the good guy and he comes through for her. He sees her flaws and still says, I like you just as you are. I guess what I'm really saying here is sobriety is a bit of a slow burn. Yes, it has an image problem. It isn't talked up or romanticized in the same way that alcohol is. So you're probably gonna make some judgments and assumptions about it. You might treat it like it's a last resort. But God, if you just opened your mind a tiny little bit, you might see that alcohol-free living is a bit like getting together with Mark Darcy. It might just be the most amazing partner for you. And I know this sounds crazy, but everything I do at the Sober School is about that really. It's about helping women like you let go of this idea that you're broken and you've got to serve this awful prison sentence of sobriety because you've screwed up your relationship with alcohol. The reality is you're just leaving one relationship and choosing another one that is going to be much, much better. Just think about all the movies there are out there, romantic comedies anyway, where the two main love interests start out hating each other. And yet you know, when you're watching it, that they are totally gonna get together. Well, I think that you and sobriety are gonna get together as well, even if you are in the hating each other phase right now. Now at this point, I should flag up an important difference between quitting drinking and the storylines of cheesy, slightly dated romantic comedies because shockingly, there is a difference. I have noticed that in most movies, there is a moment of clarity where people suddenly realize exactly how they feel and they know what they need to do and something dramatic happens. They have to run through an airport to catch someone before they leave or run to a wedding and break it up and declare their newfound feelings. There's always a lot of running for some reason. I think it's easy for us to fall for this idea that when something is right for us, then we'll have the same epiphany. We'll know beyond a shadow of a doubt. When it's time for us to quit drinking, there will be a clear sign. We will know that it's time to take big action and you know, go for it and never look back. But actually, that is rarely how it pans out in real life. With quitting drinking, there is rarely a moment where all the stars align and you suddenly just know. If you had to make a movie of the last few weeks and months of my life before I stopped drinking, my God, it would be incredibly boring to watch because 
nothing dramatic happened. It was just more of what had happened many, many times before. Only this time, for some reason, I decided to do something different and focus on taking a proper break from drinking and to really commit to that and, and not think any further ahead. So I didn't dramatically declare that I hated alcohol or decide that I was never ever drinking again. I just said to myself, I'm gonna quit drinking for a couple of months so I can see what that feels like. I think I need to give sobriety a chance and try it for more than just a few weeks or days. And then, but only then, I'll decide what to do next. So there was no rock bottom, no dramatic gestures, no running anywhere, no having some sudden clarity. It was more like the start of the next chapter rather than the end of a book or a movie. And now this is what I help other women do all the time because the Sober School Getting Unstuck course is about exactly this. It's about taking sobriety for a test drive with support so we can show you how to test drive it properly and make this journey easier and more fun. But you don't have to buy the car or put a ring on it before you've even got started. I'm aware that I am mixing up a lot of metaphors today, but I'm pretty sure you'll get what I mean. And I hope this video has given you something to think about and reflect on, because I know this, if your relationship with alcohol was a real life relationship with a romantic partner, I don't think you put up with it. And I do think that you deserve better. Happy Valentine's Day.